Welcome to the second video in the build overview of my new IO game that I'm calling Math Arena. I've had a few new features and I wanted to show this to you and explain how they were built. Now if you're just joining for the first time, there is a first video where I show everything that I've built up to this point. You can watch that if you'd like. We're going to go through a quick recap now just to show you where we're at today. So at the end of the last video, we had gotten to this point. We had our players on the screen, we had our map working, you're able to move around. And then there's also multiplayer worked fine. You can see the second thing called another player. If I go to my other player off screen here, you can see I can move that one around. So all the multiplayer is working well. And then we have ping at the top left just to show you the latency between you and the server. Although it might not seem like much at first glance, there's actually a lot of work that went into just what you see here. And I've described all of that in the first video and I'll link that below. So now let's have a look at some of the new stuff I've built. So I've added a total of three new features. The first is a leaderboard, the second is a minimap, and the third is spawning of the actual problem circles that players will solve onto the map. So because the game is not far enough to where players can actually get any points, I've just chosen a random number between 1 and 100, and I've put it in place of the score for now. And the score is a new property of the player's object, which is part of the master game state. Now making the leaderboard ended up being pretty easy. It was mostly just a visual task, and that's because the player's state is already synced down to all the connected clients every server tick anyway, so this was data that I already had. I did make one improvement though, because I'm going to be looping over the players several times, once for the map, once for the leaderboard, and then once for the mini-map, I decided to create a players array from the players object, that way I could just loop over it efficiently. So to do the leaderboard, I'm simply looping over every player, and I'm creating a div for the name and a div for the score. In terms of the visuals, it's just a transparent blue background with a header and then every name and score below that. So I just add a second player on my other screen just so you can see it, and then you can see the leaderboard is ordered by score, and that happens because the main player array is sorted by score. And that's really all there is for that, nothing really crazy there. Next up is the minimap, so I'm going to refresh here and show you what that looks like. So you can see the minimap at the bottom left here, and when I move my character you can see that the dot moves around the minimap. Now I'm the white dot, and then all the other players who would be on the map, they are light blue dots. The minimap actually ended up being pretty easy because the minimap is just like the real map. The only difference is it's dots instead of circles with text and points. In terms of the code it took to do this, it was very simple to the normal map. There is a player's loop where I loop over every player. And then the only real difference here is that with the minimap, I wanted to show both myself and the other players. This is not true of the other player loop because I don't really care about myself on the map because from my standpoint I'm always in the center and the map moves around me. However on the minimap when I move I do want to see my position move on the minimap. The second difference is I have a white dot and then the other players have a light blue dot. So I did need a little piece of logic here where I'm saying if player dot UUID equals the current UUID of the connected player then apply the class self. And then all self does is make the background color white. As far as the positioning, it is exactly the same as the bigger map. And last but not least is the problem circles. Now, of course, the actual solving of the problem doesn't work yet. The purpose here is just to create the design for the problem circles and then get them to spawn on the screen. So I chose a transparent green with a light green dash border that is animated around it. So just like the rest of this game, everything's done in HTML and that includes the problem circles. The CSS to create these problem circles is located here. The circle shape is achieved by saying the border radius to 50%. The border is a four pixel dashed green border. And then I use animation and keyframes to rotate it 360 degrees every eight seconds. So let's now talk a little bit about the logic I use to actually spawn these problem circles onto the screen because these, these are persistent, which means they're part of the game state. You can see if I hit refresh, it's the same circles. So they're all, you know, they're not specific to my browser. So essentially what I did here is I created a new routine which is intended to run once every 500 milliseconds. And the whole purpose of this routine is to look through all the problems and make sure there's at least 20 of them. If this routine sees that there's less than 20, then it's going to go ahead, it's going to add one more every 500 milliseconds until there's 20. So of course the first bit of logic here is if there's already 20 problems, then just do nothing. Next, it creates a new random UUID for the problem and then X and Y coordinate. And there's two things it does to make sure these coordinates are valid. The first is it takes a random number between the radius of the problem and then the field width minus the radius of the problem. And what this makes sure is that the problem never lies outside of the map. 
So because the problem circle has a radius of 150 pixels, the minimum X and Y value will be 150. But it's not enough to make it so it doesn't go outside of the map, I also have to make it so it doesn't overlap with any other problem. So to make sure this isn't the case, I'm going to loop over every problem that's currently on the board, and then I'm going to use this function I created called test intersect, which takes the X, Y coordinate and the radius of the problem on the screen, and then it compares it to the X, Y, and the radius of the new problem it's about to insert, and it tests to see if it intersects. If it does intersect, it just abandons the adding of this new problem, and then it tries again with a new X, Y coordinate. If it turns out that the problem is indeed valid and it's not going to overlap with anything, then it pushes it into the master game state and then publishes it to Redis for all the connected clients. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to restart the server and then I'm going to quickly refresh the browser so you can watch all of these problems fill in. So I'm going to refresh here and then you can see and watch them as they fill in. So there's one there, just add one over here, one down here, and then one right there. Now the reason I'm having this routine run just once every 500 milliseconds is because it's not imperative that this happen really, really fast. Because people are going to be rushing around to problems, they're going to be solving them, and then new problems are just going to kind of casually appear. So it, it's not as if a problem has to appear exactly as somebody solves another one. And also because it's not critical to appear right away, I haven't really tried to be ultra efficient with this operation of adding new problems. So what I have here will work just fine. However, if for some reason it does turn into a problem, I can definitely look at making this better. So that's all of my upgrades so far, and we're just going to zip around the map a little bit here just to kind of look. You can see all the problem circles, you can see the minimap is working well, and then you can see the light blue square which represents the other player on the screen. See here, other player, and so everything's working good. And I'm really not that far off from having a working game, I just have to make it so when you go into a circle it shows you a math problem, you solve it, and then you get points. And of course there's some other game mechanics I have to work in there as well. But in my mind, I'm going to have something playable pretty soon, and I think it's going to be pretty fun. I think people are going to really enjoy this. And that's it for this video. The next video I release on Math Arena is probably going to be the completed game, so definitely be on the lookout for that. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, or if you want to let me know what you think about Math Arena, let me know below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you on the next video.